All right, in this video, what I wanna do is go over these three polynomials that I feel are the most essential for students to know and understand on how to factor. Because when we're first learning factoring, we start with quadratics, right? And we kind of get that routine down and then we go and move into polynomials. And a lot of times it's a seamless transition, but for these three examples, it's usually for students not so seamless. So let's go over each of these separately so you can hopefully understand the difference in these types of problems and what we can do to go ahead and factor them. So in this first example, you can see this looks like a quadratic trinomial. I have three terms, but instead of it being raised to the second power, it is being raised to the fourth power. However, there's a lot of similarities with factoring this problem than there is going to be when factoring quadratic trinomials. So what I wanna do is let's, a lot of times when students are struggling with a problem like this, what I like to do as a teacher is just say, all right, you know what, forget x to the fourth, forget everything else, let's just pretend with the numbers that we have, it was a quadratic trinomial. Okay, so again, let's just, Make of this problem maybe something that's a little bit more familiar to us. Now, if I was going to go ahead and factor this, again, remember for quadratic trinomials, I'm looking for what two numbers multiply to give me negative six, add to give me negative five. Hopefully, as your brain is turning, you're like, oh, that's negative six and a positive one. So I could factor this as a product of two binomials to a x minus six times a x plus plus one. And again, you can multiply that back out to verify, but that is going to be general form for factoring a quadratic like that. So. When we look at a trinomial that's not raised to the second power, but raised to a higher power, what we simply need to do is think about, well, I still need to achieve the negative six and the negative five, right? So having my trinomial separated into two binomials makes sense, especially with keeping the negative six and the positive one. Now, one quick thing I really want to remind you of this, the reason why I initially am going into to a binomial times a binomial is because remember, when you multiply this out, your terms are going to add to give you that middle term, right? So we know x times x gives me the x squared, x times one is a positive x, negative six times x is going to be a negative six x, and negative six times one is a negative six. These two terms combine, right? Now again, my middle term is what these two middle terms combine to. So what I want you to think about is look at what my middle term is. Yeah, I'm gonna get the negative five, right? But I need it to be an x squared. Or think about it this way. I need this first two terms, x times x multiplied give me an x squared, right? Now, I need in this case to get it to an x to the fourth. So what should I choose? Now, x times x, what is going to give me, I need this to be x to the fourth. Now, sometimes you might think, well, what about if you did x to the fourth and, and or x to the third times x, right? That would actually add, because you add the powers to x to the fourth. However, you wouldn't have your middle terms combined because again, these terms need to be exactly the same because we need these middle terms, this negative six x and this one to go ahead and combine. So these powers have to be exactly the same. So what two powers that are exactly the same are going to give me x to the fourth? Hopefully you recognize it here and it's just going to be a x squared times an x squared. And ladies and gentlemen, that's it, right? Now again, let's multiply this back out. x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. x times positive one is going to be an x. Negative six times x squared is going to be a negative six x squared. And negative six times one is going to be a negative six. You can see these are going to combine to give you back my original middle term. Ah, that's supposed to be an x squared. <laughs> Sorry about that. So all I simply, when you're factoring something like this, when you see it as a trinomial, all you simply wanna do is factor it, just like how you know how to do as a product of two binomials, but then raise your powers to be able to match your middle term, as well as to make sure that they're gonna to multiply to give you that first term. Obviously, if that is not possible, then this factor technique would not work in that case. All right, now it's going into a polynomial with four terms. Now, whenever I'm teaching polynomials with four terms, or at least factoring polynomials in general, whenever I see a polynomial with four terms, I just tell students, think grouping, right? Remember for quadratics, when we see a trinomial, we're thinking about doing you know, that factoring technique. And when we see two terms, we're either thinking factor out the GCF, or a lot of times I always say, look for difference of two squares. Two terms, look for difference of two squares, or the GCF. When we see four terms, I immediately tell students, look for grouping. Now again, what grouping is going to do is we're just going to group the first two terms and the last two terms. However, we have to make sure when we're grouping them that uh, we're not changing the signs, right? And we're not changing it to a multiplication problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to rewrite this just real quick. Because don't you guys agree 
minus is the same thing like plus a negative, okay? Now, the reason why I did that is because I want to group the terms, but I still wanna have them separated. If you just put parentheses around here and you don't include that plus sign, then you're gonna turn this into a multiplication problem. And that's not what we're trying to do. So when we're looking for four terms, group the first two terms and the last two terms. If you already have a subtraction, just make sure you change it to a plus a negative. So therefore you can group it correctly. Now, the next thing we wanna do is just look into factoring out the GCF of each of these terms. So I say, all right, what does a six X squared and a four X have in common? Or what is a common factor both of those terms that I can divide out. And you can see they both share an X, so I can take out an X, and I can also divide out a two. So by dividing out a two X from both of these terms, over here, I'm gonna be left with a three X, and over here, I'm going to be left with a positive two. Now, the goal of factoring by grouping is to get whatever's inside the parentheses to be exactly the same. Do you see the numbers are exactly the same? However, these are both positive, these are both negative. So I need to think of a GCF that I can factor out to take these both negative to be positive. And hopefully if you're thinking, well, why don't you just factor out a negative one? Well, then you would be correct. And it'd be like plus technically like, oh, let's do this, let's rearrange this. So technically we have that plus your negative one and left over here is now a positive three X plus two. Well, ladies and gentlemen, what is plus a negative? That's still just gonna be a subtraction, right? So let's rewrite this. So I have a two X, three X plus two minus negative one, three X plus two. Okay, notice that these are both exactly the same. Just like how we have both had an X here, I factored out the X, right? Since these, both of these terms, which are separated by the subtraction sign, I now can factor out the common term that I have here, which is going to be a three X plus two. What is going to be left over? A two X and a negative one. So I have a three X plus two can be multiplied by a two X minus one. So when, again, whenever you see a polynomial with four terms, think factor by grouping. All right, the last one is going to be one that students always seem to forget. And whenever we see two terms, a lot of two, again, students think difference of two squares, difference of two squares, that's what I drill them into their brain. However, when we're dealing with a cube, we actually have the sum or the difference of two cubes. So you just have to remember, a lot of times students, will get confused because they just remember difference of two squares and they always, they sometimes only think that the difference of only two cubes is going to be the result, but that's not true. So the difference of two cubes has a formula that goes like this. All we simply need to remember is if we have a cubed plus b cubed, the first binomial is always gonna be symmetric of that, just as a plus b. If it was a cubed minus b cubed, then it'd be an a minus b. And then over here, you're just gonna have this change sign. So it's a squared minus a b plus a b squared. If it was a squared or a cubed minus b cubed, it would be a minus b, a squared plus a b plus b squared, okay? So what we need to be able to do is identify, is this in that format? Can I rewrite this first term as something cubed and the last term as something cubed? Well, obviously you see the X cubed, so like that's good, but we have to make sure we have the number as well. So what I see is, can I rewrite eight as a number cubed? And hopefully you recognize, yeah, I can rewrite that as a two, right? Because two cubed, two times two times two equals eight. And then for 27, can I rewrite 27 as a cubed number? And the answer is yes, of course I can. Um, that's going to be a three cubed. So if a cubed, is equal to a two X cubed. And if I wanna be able to solve for A, we'll take the cube root of both sides. A is going to equal a two X. And if B cubed is equal to a three cubed, then hopefully you recognize B is equal to three. So now if I know my value of A and I know my value of B, then all we're simply gonna do guys is plug them into this formula. So two A plus three, and then we have a two X squared minus times three plus a three squared. Okay, now let's go ahead and simplify. And there it goes, ladies and gentlemen. Those are the three most popular polynomials that I believe you need to know. Hope this video helps. Cheers.